Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh guys So here is a video uh, to help you guys go through our uh, next topic which is trigonometric graph which is part of the trigonometry So it's best if you can print out your notes So while doing it, you can have a uh, listen uh, through this video If you have any question, you can reach me through WhatsApp Okay So the first part of this topic is uh, period and amplitude. But before that, uh, just know that uh, for this note, sometimes I'll be using theta for angle or x. Okay. So period and amplitude. So period is the, for example, we have a sine graph here. Period is the length of angle which uh, the function completes its cycle, one cycle. Or where it repeats itself so from here you can see that it repeats itself every 360 degrees so that is the period okay so period is not the number of cycle in 360 degrees for example here we have one cycle in 360 so period is not equals to one period is 360 degrees okay so it can be in degrees or in radian depending on the angle used so amplitude is the height from the midline to the maximum okay so here are the examples that you can try so i have provided a solution here for you guys so we can try one example here so if you look at question number four all right so the period is a complete cycle here we have only a half cycle so imagine that a complete cycle should take it around four pi Get it? So therefore the period is 4 pi. Okay, the amplitude you can see it's from 0 to 2, so amplitude equals to 2. So you can have a try on this one. Alright, so the next part that we, we need to go through is the basic trigonometric graph of sine, cos, and tangent. You have done this before. Okay, so I just have a go through on this note. Okay, so the first one is for sine and cos, they are very similar to each other. Uh, they are only differ dif uh, differ in shapes. As you can see, sine has this shape and cos has this shapes. They have different minimum and maximum. So for this both both of these graph, it's best if you use interval of 30 degrees if you want to draw it. So it can make it easier if you use this interval. Alright. So both of this graph completes its cycle every 360 degrees. So which means that it has a period of 360 degrees. So it's also important for you to remember to know these important points here because we will use it to draw our graph later. Okay. So for tangent is a bit different and it's a bit uh, tricky here compared to sine and cos. Okay. So for one, it has a period of 180 degrees, which means it repeats itself every 100 degrees, 180 degrees, not 360 degrees. Okay, so it has this asymptote line here where the graph will never reach it. So it happens every 90 degrees. So you have to know these very important points. If you study this graph carefully, it should be no problem. Okay, and to draw the graph, it's best to use interval of 45 degrees. Uh, it's not necessarily all the time, but most of the time, it's best to use 45 degrees. If you have other better intervals then you can use that uh, another thing is tangent does not have amplitude okay because if you see this graph here it goes on infinity so the amplitude is undefined okay so next we're gonna go through a general trigonometric graph which has this form a sine cos tangent bx plus c so this is exactly the same as transformation of function that we did uh, earlier Okay, so A, it affects the verticality of the graph. Okay, so A is not the amplitude, but you can find amplitude by uh, changing it into positive, meaning modulus of A. So A is not amplitude. If you have minus A, that's not the amplitude. You change it to positive, then that's the amplitude. Okay, so you, you can see this example here. Right, so if a is equals to 2, for example, example 2 here, 
so it increases by a factor of 2, scale of 2. So if A is negative 1, for example, question 4 here, example 4 here, then it will flip upside down. Alright, so just study this graph. So B will affect the graph uh, horizontally. If B is greater than 1, your graph will shrink. If B is in between 0 and half, for example, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, it will expand. So study this graph. Another important thing from B is uh, we can find period if we have B by using this formula. So period is equal to 360 degrees divided by B for sine and cos or 180 degrees divided by B for tangent. Okay, so B is not the period. B is the number of cycle. B is number of cycle in 360 degrees. Or 180 degrees for tangent. So we have this formula relating period and B. So this is very important. Alright? So you can study this graph. So for example here, for 360 degrees, we have two cycles. One and two. So B equals to two. We can also find the period by using this formula. So period equals to 360 degrees divided by 2, which is 180 degrees. So if you can see this graph again, it's correct. It completes its cycle at 380 degrees. Alright? So C is just shifting uh, upwards or downwards. If C is positive, going upwards. If C is negative, going downwards. You can study the graph again. Okay, so the last one is we want... Uh, no, the fourth one is we want to uh, read... A given trigonometric graph and find its equation. So how to do this? You can follow the steps that I have provided. All right. So the first one is you want to draw a midline, a dotted line, at the center of the graph, mid, uh, a horizontal midline like right here. So this line can help you to see the shape of the graph better, and it also can help you to find A and C later. Okay. So step one done. So step two is to find out which type of graph is this, either sine, cos, or tangent. So if you look at this graph again, definitely it's not a tangent graph. It looks like a sine and it looks like cos. But if you study carefully, this graph is actually an upside down, an upside down of a sine graph. Okay? So you have a sine graph, something like this, then it's flipped upside down. So it's a sine graph. Alright, so step 3, if the graph is flipped upside down, you have to put negative sign later on your A. Alright, done. Okay, step 4, you want to find A first. So how do you find A? Is by uh, finding the length from the midline that we, we just drawn just now, from this one, to the maximum, uh, maximum point of the graph, which is 2. But remember that it's an upside upside down graph, so you have to put negative. Okay, so the length is 2, cannot be negative, but since it's an upside down, so you have to put minus, which means that we, we flip it upside down. Okay, so A is equals to minus 2. Alright, so next step number 5 is we want to find B. So if you cannot find b directly from the graph we have to use the formula okay so remember b is the number of cycle in 360 degrees for sine and cos or the number of cycle in 180 degrees for tangent so from here we can easily see that we have three cycles in 360 degrees so which means that b equals to 3 sometimes it's very difficult to to read your b so use this formula so how do you find it? Find one period. You can see here one period took 120 degrees and then use the formula then you get B. So you have two ways, either using the finding period and use the formula or you can read directly if you can. And finally C is just finding the shape, the face shape, ups, upwards or downwards. So how do you do that? You start from X axis and then you, you find the shape towards our midline so in this case it's going downwards so downwards one step so therefore c equals to minus one
So finally, you just put in the values of A, B, C, then you get your your equation. So we read this and we do it. Okay. So this is an exactly same uh, examples. Just another examples to help you guys. So please uh, redo it. Uh, this one is an equation. Uh, examples exercise that you can do. I provided examples. Uh, the solution here. Try your best. If you have question, uh, try to reach me. Uh, if you need a video to help discuss this, I will do it for you. Okay. So the last one is we wanna we wanna sketch a graph from a given equation. So this is very easy to do. So just follow the steps here. So step number one is you wanna find your a, b, c here. Okay. So once you have done that, second one is you wanna draw a basic graph, trigonometric graph. So in this case, we have a sine graph. So you just wanna draw a basic sine graph. Okay. But make make sure that you you include the important points here. So here is 90, and then here is oh sorry here is 180. And then here is your here is your 360 degrees. Okay, so step three, we want to deal with a. So you multiply your y y point here with three. So one times by three is three minus one times by three is minus three. Zero times by three is zero. So now we have a graph of y equals to. 3 sine x, we don't even need to redraw it, we're just changing the, the points here. Okay, so next we want to deal with c. So we want to shift it upwards or downwards. So we just add this point with c. In this case, our c is 5, right? So 3 plus minus 5 is minus 2. Okay, 0 minus 5 is minus 5. Minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8. Okay. Done. So, and then this one is not your x axis anymore. So, you just draw a dotted line. Okay. So that you'll not get confused as uh, x axis. Alright. So, with that, done. We have a graph of y equals to 3 sine x minus 5. Okay, so next we want to deal with B. So remember that B is the number of cycle in 360 degrees. Okay, so since we have B equals to 2, it's best to find uh, to find the period of the graph first. So using the formula, period 360 divided by 280. So which means that our graph finish the cycle instead of 360. We can erase this and change just change it into 180 degrees. We don't need to redraw it. Just erase your 360, change to 180. Okay, and the points here you can find it yourself. 180 divided by 2 equals to 90. 90 divided by 2 is 145 degrees and so on. So with that we have a graph of y equals to 3 sine x minus 5. Done. So what you need need to do next is just finalize your graph properly. Okay. So remember that your graph, you need to draw it from 0 to 360 degrees. So you can transfer these important points into your new graph. Okay, so since this is a sine graph, it's better if you use uh, every 30 interval, every 30 degrees. Then you translate properly into a new, new, a new graph. And then you just need to follow the pattern and we complete the graph. With that, finish. Alright. So this is another example that you can learn, okay? You study the, uh, study the steps and try to redo it. So this is a few examples that you can try to help you guys out. Solution is provided on the next page, okay? So with that, it con uh, we conclude our lesson on trigonometric graph. So I'm very sorry if the video is very brief because I only have 15 minutes uh, to record this. If you have any questions, you can reach me through WhatsApp. If you need any more explanation, I can provide it through more videos. Okay, so good luck and see you soon.